Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask the Young Cow. I'm Leon Street and he is... I'm Jack Rogers. Hello and welcome. So today we've got an interesting topic. It's all about Twitter today. And so really it's just to open the doors up to you guys, small business owners, entrepreneurs, into what has Twitter got available for you to build your business and brand online to help you generate sales and leads. Now, this is a topic that Jack has got a close affinity with and he's also been testing this on a small project that he's involved with so that means he's well versed in terms of what this has to offer for your business out there and what we're looking at today specifically is more of the organic side of twitter and what we'll do in another additional episode is where we'll go into probably looking at twitter sponsored tweets and ads on twitter's um, website so what is the title today yeah, let, let me yeah, remind us. So the, the title is How to Use Twitter to Help Grow Your Brand Online. And so as we do every Wednesday, 1 p.m. UK time, we have hashtag ATYC where you can ask us any of your questions to do with internet marketing and small business. We're here to help. We're here to answer those annoying questions, the problems, the pains. And, you know, it's all about helping you guys to move forward. So what I'd like to do is just jump into... Uh, handy presentation now let's see if i can get it to work mm, here we go <laughs> technology technology so here it is how to use twitter to help grow your brand online and so what we're looking at today is using twitter in terms of communicating generating leads showing your brand's personality researching trends and providing customer service is that about right jack yeah that's right Cool. Um, <clears throat> and so what I'd like to do really is just move on to our next slide. And so I'm going to hand over to you, Jack, and so you can teach us about communicating on Twitter. Yeah. Okay, then. So how do I communicate with followers? So Twitter is a way to keep your followers up to date with current information about your business. And yet important, importantly, it lets followers communicate with you in a more relaxed environment. So this allows you to target potential followers by seeing who interacts with hashtags linked to your business and um, I think we'll go into hashtags a, a little later on and explain what they are okay so one way you can communicate with your followers is a simple tweet or it's tw if you don't know what a tweet is it's a post or I'd say can you think of any other yeah I can it's a 140 character message that you can yeah, post on message. Twitter yeah. and so Twitter is all about short, snappy, consistent, and regular messages going out to your followers or even mentioning people who aren't your followers, but people who may be interested or potentially interested in your products, your services, or even just a hobby or something that you've got a, a common ground in. And so well, I think that kind of answers what you asked me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. So there's different ways that you can tweet. You can add images. You can have plain text and you can also embed videos on. Okay. Which is what we do with the, the Hangouts. That's right, actually. So um, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to stop the presentation. And I think you've picked up on a really useful topic there in terms of embedding videos. So what I'm going to do is jump onto our Twitter feed for Young Cow. If you want to get us on Twitter, it's at Young Cow UK. And what I'm going to do is share my screen. And so let's find the right window. So hopefully this works, Jack. Yeah, I'd say good luck. Last time I tried, it gave me a bit of trouble. Oh, it didn't work. Hold on. Here we are. Look, if you're getting a blank screen right about now, apologies. But what you should be seeing <laughs> is a picture of um, or a, a preview of our Twitter page with a YouTube video, this actual live hangout embedded into the Twitter post. And what uh, a visitor is able to do is click on the play button and they will get this hangout live. If you're watching this back, guys, I'm going to stop the presentation just in case you are getting a blank screen. Technology issues with hangouts. Come on, Google, sort it out. Mm -hmm. Actually, I interviewed Ronnie Bintz from one of our podcasts, so I need to speak to him and find out what's going on. But anyway, the, the real beauty of Twitter is that you can embed media these days, so you can embed whether it's a live hangout and you get the YouTube URL to post your live hangout. If you use or have a podcast and you're on Stitcher, I know that you can embed Stitcher, um, it's the best way for me to put it, Stitcher media player. So when you put the URL in, it shows a media player for podcast episodes. 
and somebody can play that direct from Twitter. So imagine they're either on the desktop or mobile. Somebody either gets to see you or listen to you. And there's nothing more powerful than that because, you know, it's you in front of them with your message, not just text and a picture, but something that people can hear and get a feeling about. So I'd say that's quite an important one. Um, do you want to add to that or do you want us to move on to the presentation? Uh, mate? Yeah, if you can, I'd like to just continue on the communicating point. Oh, OK. Uh, if you can just share the screen. All right, let's keep, give me a moment, Jack. I think Jack's going to go in a bit deeper on this one, guys. So yeah. here we go. So at the bottom of the presentation, I've got something called a tweet tip. So when you're going to tweet, try and add a relevant image to the tweet. This isn't just to appeal visually to your followers. I've recently found out a little trick with Twitter. When you upload an image, you can describe and attach people who oh, I'm trying to get. Come on, Jack, you're trying to get technical. You can tag people. That's yeah, the word. Tag people in the image <laughs> and they don't need to be following you. So okay. I've had some success with this with my small project. And what it allows you to do is target maybe bigger following, bigger pages that are similar to you that have a bigger following. And right. this allows you to possibly get a retweet or favorite from them. And a retweet is, it's a share, isn't it? I'd say that's the best. Yeah, that's what a retweet is. Way. You know what I'm going to do, Jack? I'm going to do this live. I'm going, to, right. I'm going to put your example into our presentation just because I'm not sure if our viewers who are watching this live are getting blank pages when we share it because we seem to have an issue and we will get it fixed, guys, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so just give me a moment. So... The whole point is that what Jack's talking about is you can start to embed or post material onto your Twitter profile that is basically more engaging, I think is the best way for me yeah. to explain it, isn't it? And yeah. so you're able to, to get people to engage with the posts that you're putting online. And if you have got media or if you have got images, you know, there's no better medium for you to be posting with. And so I think I've just about cracked it. And so we're doing this live, guys. We've got some real, it's like a cookery program right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be seeing the presentation, which I've neatly just put in for you. And it's literally just so you guys get a feel. And you can see in the middle there is one of the, the graphic banners that Jack had created on this project that he's working on, which is a one-two coaching for football and soccer, um, where you can learn sessions on various different aspects of football. If you're listening from America, it is soccer we're talking about, not American football. So whether it's defense, midfield, or attacking, there's information on there. But the key thing is, and what we want to get across here, guys, is he, he's pointing out the graphic and so with the graphic, you get more engagement, you can tag people into your photos, and it's very likely that people will also favorite and retweet those images. And if, if you look a bit close, you can probably see just below the image where it shows the retweet symbol, which looks like two square arrows, and the star symbol, which means that people can favorite that image. And so it just shows the popularity of the medium that you're sharing. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So do you want to move on? Yeah, I think we spent some good time on that Okay, one. all right, cool. So Jack's next slide on this is generating leads. Now, I'm interested to find out what you're talking about here, generating leads. How can it? Right. So Twitter, you can tweet about special offers mm -hmm. or new pro products, and you can also, which encourages your followers to click on the product or offer mm -hmm. and potentially lead to a sale. So, for example, I know Leon said we'd talk about sponsored tweets maybe in a, a future. Mm -hmm. I think we'll go out. into it in more detail yeah. for show. Sure. More detail. Yeah. Um, so, well, I've lost my right So, creating a sponsored tweet can showcase a special Twitter only offer. Mm -hmm. So, this means only direct followers can see the tweet and they get a special link that when they click on it, only goes to a page that is accessible from Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, there are other ways of doing this as well, so you can... I suppose you could do it organically without going through sponsored yeah, so ads as well. you don't need to have them follow you back or you to follow them. It can just be using hashtags to get the right... Mm -hmm. I'm not explaining this very well. Yeah, to get to get the right yeah. topic of interest. Yeah, and I right think of one of the key things that 
I would say is important when you're trying to generate leads from Twitter is use what we've just spoken about. So use some graphics, use some media, whether you've got a video, whether you've got a past archive video on YouTube or even, you know, on Vimeo. Maybe you've got a podcast that's really cool and talks about a specific area in your industry, your business, and you probably embed the link from Stitcher Radio, let's say. And so these are all ways that you can attract people. And if you are doing the sponsored um post by Twitter where you're doing the ads and so on. Maybe you, you have got a short video, maybe you've got a graphic, an image banner that attracts people in and you can, in the same post as well as pushing that image, you can have the hashtag, you can have the, the, the medium show up as well. But remember you only have 140 characters and so what I would also say is don't feel like you're limited because if you are doing organic marketing on Twitter where you're not paying Twitter directly to put the stuff on there, you know, you can be posting regularly throughout the day. There's no harm in you posting about a specific topic. And I'm talking about um, each message being unique, not copy and pasting that message, but actually creating some difference in each message. Message, And you posting something like 50 messages a day, there's no harm in that because what you've got to look at is your target local. Is it national or is it international? If it's international, remember at a time when you post your message, it might be, someone's nighttime when they're asleep so you need to make sure that your posts are going out through the day if your target is worldwide international so it's just something to bear in mind if you're only marketing locally within your town or country then fine you know the times of when you need to get your messages out there so whether it is you know eight in the morning whether it's at lunch times afternoons or after 5 p.m into the evening what you've got to do is start looking at your testing and measuring how many impressions your posts make how many engagement factors they make whether people click on the post whether they favorite retweet and various other aspects which you can find in Twitter so it is a great way and what I would say is if you are promoting things make sure you are pointing people to some kind of landing page because the landing page is where you capture your person of interest so if somebody comes from Twitter, you want to get their name, email, telephone number, whatever it is that you're collecting. And so I would say these are some of the, the key aspects when it comes to generating leads from Twitter. And so from my point of view, Twitter is a really good place for you to generate interest and generate leads. And what you've got to look at is when you do get the interaction, don't think that it you know it's just something that needs to stay on Twitter you can build on it you can encourage people to other landing pages you could even say um, thanks for showing interest or even you know tweeting or favoriting something here's another thing that I've done and maybe you say well here's a link to a video I've recorded on this topic that you might find of interest or send them a podcast that you've been involved with or you have or even send them to a blog that you've got so it's another way to pull people back into your funnel. And the funnel I'm talking about is your kind of marketing loop that pulls people in, qualifies them, allows you to then be in a position where you have a prospect or, or a warm lead. And so that's where I'd like to finish with the kind of lead aspect. Is that all right? Yeah. Cool. So let's jump back into the presentation, guys. And we're going to go into the next slide. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Showing your brand's personality. Jack, do tell more. Right, okay, so Twitter is a chance to liven up your image. Tweeting about your team and your business's personality gives followers a sense of your business as more than just a supplier of services, but as real people with great personalities. And I put at the end there, as long as you do it right. Okay, so what do you mean by do it right? There are, I was searching whilst doing this presentation, and there are some pages where it doesn't go too well providing personality on their Twitter page as often it's not right for the business so what do you mean can you give us an example for example I can't remember what Twitter page it was I don't think I should say it anyway you haven't got to mention the name just no. give us an idea of what, they, why you thought it wasn't correct or right they tweeted as they were representing themselves not as the business right so they weren't worried so they did it from a personal aspect rather than yeah their... personal okay. aspect but on the business's twitter account mm -hmm. so they didn't take into a, a into account that the business has a certain reputation that they have to uphold and yeah they yeah. have to keep to I get that. this created a big backlash of negative negativity really right and so i i think and correct me if i'm wrong I think what Jack is talking about, guys, is making sure that whatever message you're putting out there on Twitter, it's congruent 
it's in line with what you're currently doing, whether it's on your blog or, or LinkedIn. And so you're not trying to go outside of the norms of what the culture is of your business and the way that you communicate your marketing message. Is that where you go? Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like when you first meet somebody, you wouldn't really, depending on your business, could be wrong, but let, let's set the scenario. Say you're an accountant and you're looking at a new client in terms of you've got a client meeting coming up. It's, it's probably the stereotype that's going to be created is they're probably going to expect you as an accountant to be to be dressed in a shirt, tie, suit, maybe. You know, look smart, look the part. Whereas if you attended the meeting in swimming shorts, flip-flops, and you had your swimming goggles on top of your head, I would say that was inappropriate, which, you know, I hope you can yes. see that mental picture. And I have made it a bit extreme. And so really, it's just the same. If you were a surfing shop and you were selling surfboards, you wouldn't want, really want to be posting pictures of you in suits and looking square, you know, kind of thing. And so it's just it's finding what's right for you, what's the right culture. And and don't get me wrong, those are just extreme stereotypes, but there are many businesses that cross over those boundaries. And so they're not boundaries to hold you back. It's just more highlighting whether something is appropriate or inappropriate for your business. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going live again. We're going to live edit because I want to demonstrate this point, Jack. Yeah. that's all right yeah. so delete right okay so bear with me guys i'm going to give you an example here of what is appropriate if i can get it to work <laughs> right so i'm going to try it one more time and see if we can get this to work no nope. we haven't got it going on here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to save a file just so you can see what we're talking about. Just the only reason why we're doing it this way, guys, is at the moment we can't get it to show our Twitter page. Um, so basically pictures from our browser. But now you probably can see. Okay, so if you look from the left, we have Sam, myself, Leon, we've got Cam for third from the left, and then we've got Jack on the right, all looking a bit muddy. <laughs> now, I suppose the question is, is this the right or appropriate approach for us to be tweeting about now let me give you a bit of background this is our team the young cat team taking place or taking part even in tough mudder midlands and so that's the reason why we all look a bit muddy and this was a 11.2 24 obstacle race yeah. event i would say it happens throughout the world and we took part in the one in the midlands in the uk now is this appropriate yes it is because Tough mudder, whilst it's you know, there's a lot of mud involved, there's a lot of pain. Yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> Pers perspiration. Um this event sponsors Help for Heroes, so it helps the charity. It also allowed us to work together as a team, and so it was almost like a team building exercise, and at the same time it shows our level of commitment and the fact that we completed this course successfully. And so would this be appropriate for our business to be tweeted about? Yes. And that's why you're looking at a picture of us off our, or on our Twitter feed. And so, you know, like I was saying, guys, just find stuff that is appropriate for you to talk about. I mean, we've got pictures now from the event and there's so many things, captions and artwork that we've already thought about that we can now use in our marketing and it will be appropriate and it may involve you know, puns to do with mud and us being stuck in mud or you being stuck in mud in your business and how to get through it all, you know, expect that from us coming up. And so find what works for your culture and your business. Okay. So I think that kind of rounds up showing your brand's personality. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, guys, hopefully you're enjoying this as much as we are so far and you've not got as muddy as we have. But like I said, today is the focus on Twitter, helping to build your brand and your business online. It's really just some quick fire shots in our weekly hangout to take you and your business to the next level. And what we're going to do now is move into the next slide. Right. So researching trends. <clears throat> now, can you tell me more what this means, Jack? Yeah. So we touched on it a little on the, on the earlier slides. Mm -hmm. So... Twitter, you don't have to tweet to use Twitter. So what that means is you can... That doesn't sound right, Jack. Does it not? No, that sounds a bit like you're spying on people. Right. Yeah, <laughs> go, or, on, go on, go on. Being um, a lurker or someone yeah, who just, yeah, who just yeah. likes to look but not get involved. Okay, tell, so tell me more. This is it's basically searching and following tweets that give you great topics and ideas. Mm -hmm. 
for potential tw potential Twitter followers, if you set up your own Twitter account so you can get an understanding of what competitors or similar pages like yourselves are doing mm -hmm. and whether they're getting good engagement from it, whether they're getting the interaction with other people or the followers or whether they're getting the retweets okay. favorites like we mentioned earlier mm -hmm. which is why we've got hashtag atyc yep underneath the paragraph because this is i'd say is similar to a keyword mm -hmm. when it comes to google adwords and, and something similar to that yeah yeah that it's a word that people will search for and can be directed to your page that's right yeah so if we were to click on ATYC, we can see all the tweets that any page has done, not just the cells, where that hashtag ATYC has been mentioned. Mm -hmm. And we use this to answer any possible questions from viewers watching the Hangout Live now. Yeah. Or if they watch on YouTube at a later date, they can tweet us using hashtag ATYC and we can easily pick this up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're just doing a live ATYC hashtag search on Twitter whilst we're going through this presentation. What's quite interesting, our current slide is currently showing up as the thumbnail preview for the YouTube video that we've embedded for today's right. Hangouts, and so it's pretty cool actually. Yeah. So it just it just shows it's actually live. But yeah, use the hashtag as ways to research things. Normally, what you'll find is people will say, "Oh, what's trending on Twitter?" and that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the hashtags and so normally for instance if i don't know let's say one day say if it happened in you know the upcoming years england win the world cup football i'm praying here guys <laughs> bear with me it's hope you know i've been let down so many times in my 35 years on this planet <laughs> i'm waiting for it to happen but anyway let's say there was a hashtag um england win world cup that would be the thing that would people would be posting and if you clicked on that hashtag or search for that hashtag you would see all of the posts and all of the tweets that were to do with that topic and like you rightly said jack it's almost like a search keyword that you would use on google but it's it's what basically twitter use as their search mechanism for people to find out a specific topic now the good thing is that the archive feature with Twitter means that people can search on past use of hashtags. And so it's also a good way to, you know, to look into topics that are to do with your business, your industry, and maybe there's people who've put questions out there and that you can answer because they haven't had them answered. Say they've got a problem or a pain to do with something that your products or services fix. It's another good way to engage with people. We've also got on the presentation, we've got lists. Look at lists, they're a great way to put people into a list that may be leads, there may be people who've got interesting content, interesting topics, there may be experts that you follow, you wanna find out more about. Start looking at lists, a great, great way to just group people together and you can see what messages they're you know, talking about because you've got them grouped as a list of people. So that's what we've got to talk about on that part. Right, are we getting close to the end? I think yeah, we are. I think we are. Right, guys, hope you're enjoying it so far. So how to build your business and brand using Twitter. This is the intro one that we've done. If you've not watched any of our videos up until now, go check them out on YouTube. Search for Young Cow. You'll be able to find, I don't know, there's probably about 15 or so yeah. videos on there. We are growing. We've got we've got over 100 subscribers. Hey, I think the next time we hit 150 or something, we're going to do one of those typical YouTube where we hold you know the paper up with the numbers on the back and say you know thanks guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so onwards and forwards what we're going to do jack is look at our presentation and i'm, I'm hacking the the um glitch we have on the computer right now <laughs> so what's the next slide jack yeah so the next slide is providing customer service oh, through this, twitter this sounds interesting so so what have you got for us so yeah what's the best way to provide customer service via twitter so for twitter savvy customers asking questions and getting answers via twitter is very convenient mm -hmm. and it can be used for all sorts of customer inquiries with your team using their names and answering mm -hmm. in a more chatty and personal tone yeah and twitter can be seen as a i'd say a quicker way to get a response mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to fill in a form and wait a couple of days for a response yep. or maybe you're not that confident on the phone to call somebody up mm -hmm. maybe you just want that quick quick answer 
and just because you're tweeting at the company for some advice doesn't mean that the company can be the only ones who reply mm -hmm. if you are using the right hashtags like we mentioned earlier yeah. people who are also searching for that hashtag may also be able to help you as well yeah good point so it's not just you, you aren't just asking the company direct you're asking all of their followers or other people interested in what you're tweeting about mm. i think it's a good point actually i mean we've had we've actually had a few queries yeah. you've probably not been aware because i i tend to manage our twitter feed but now and again we have customers who ask for hosting account details via twitter i know i find it oh. bizarre because i actually have my mobile telephone number and you think oh maybe they're just text or phone but no they've used twitter and so obviously we don't share the personal details and secure details that they need to get into their hosting accounts but it is a way that they have communicated with us. Yeah. And so the key thing is that you actually do need to reply because Twitter is now and you can get direct through to people. And if you're not showing good customer support, it can also reflect negatively on you. And so if you show great customer support, have a guess what? It will reflect positively on you. So listen to what Jack's saying and go out and use Twitter for customer support or customer service. and Let's be real about this, guys. If you've got a small business, you haven't got time for Twitter, maybe you need to outsource it to one of your team, maybe you need to outsource it to an external provider, but make sure that you do fit it in if you believe it is part of your marketing mix. What I would say is that just because we're talking about Twitter doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and use it. All we're saying today is if you are using it, go out, try it. If you're not using it, test it if you've got the time to. If your plate's full, then look at it when you've got an opportunity in the next 90 days after you're doing you know, your current goals or whatever. And so I think that's all I'd like to say on that point. And so we're not driving you to use it, but what we are saying is go out and use it if you can. All right. So let's move on, guys. Conclusion time. We're going to wrap this one up. To it. What is it? Nearly 29 minutes. Yeah. Wow. That time has flown. And so if you've been locked on live through Hangouts, I'm going to stop sharing that for the moment. We're, we're just moving into our conclusion phase really enjoyed this so far yeah I think it's been amazing. quite relaxed yeah you know? remember hashtag atyc you've got the twitter handle top left at young cow uk we're talking about twitter today this is from the newsroom here where we're barred in with our prison bars behind us myself leon street jack rogers let's wrap this up yeah. <laughs> so conclusion time use the knowledge we've spoken about today to enlighten yourself about twitter Test and measure what works. The best way to test and measure is look at the impressions and the engagements that you have on your posts, and then look at how many leads or sales that you generate on your website once people come as a direct result of clicking on links from Twitter to your landing pages. Find out what works by analyzing Google Analytics if you're using it. If you're not, go out, find out about it, get it installed on your website. And then what doesn't work, can that, what does work, do more of it. That's a wrap from us at Young Cow. Remember, every Wednesday, 1 p.m. UK time, we're here to bring you the hustle. We're going to bring you some internet marketing, a bit of digital marketing, and all those good ingredients in between, whether it's YouTube, Twitter, Google, AdWords, Google Organic. Throw some more at me, Jack. I'm, I'm oh. asking for some of your Hangouts, Google+, Plus, LinkedIn. We got that hustle, baby. So keep it coming. Remember, this is the only place you're going to get this rawness. If you got questions you want us to answer, you got problems, leave a comment in the comments box on YouTube underneath the video. If you're using Twitter, hashtag the ATYC with your question or problem, and we will get you an answer. That's a promise. Yeah, promise. Take care, guys. See you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.